One important thing when making games is the ability to trigger events during a certain point in your animations. When making a 3D game in Unreal Engine this is quite easy and you can simply create an anim notifier or anim notify state within an animation montage. But sadly doing this with Paper 2D isn't that straightforward and can be quite hard to wrap your head around it first. So in this video I'll give you a rundown of how you can trigger events for things such as playing footstep sounds or activating a hitbox during an attack animation. I'll also explain events we get from the flipbook that let us know when an animation ended, which we can then use to do things such as resetting an attack state and going back into the idle animation. If you're using the free Paper ZD plugin, you actually get access to animation notifies very similarly to the ones Unreal Engine uses for 3D games. But I already made a video about that which you can check out here. In this tutorial we use base Paper 2D, since I believe it's important that you have an understanding of these concepts even if you end up using Paper ZD in the end. I think you'll get a lot out of just watching this video, but if you want to follow along, you'll need to have a Paper 2D character that has the basic setup and can at least walk. If you don't have that, you can check out the last video in this series on how to make a 2D side-scrolling character. I'll first show you how we can play footstep sounds with Paper 2D when the foot of our character touches the ground during the run animation. Just to show you the comparison, in a 3D game all you have to do is add a play sound notify. In Paper ZD this also works similarly and is very easy to do. So if you think this works similarly in base Paper 2D, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a lot more involved. First we need to open up the character blueprint and locate the tick event. You might already have a lot of other things being triggered from tick, so you might want to clean this up a bit first. You can drag out a reference to the sprite and call get flipbook on it. We can then use the equal node and check if the current playing flipbook is the walk flipbook. After that we can use a branch to only continue execution if that's the case. Since we don't want to play footstep sounds during the idle animation. Just to see how this works we can use a print string. For the next step we again get a reference to the sprite and then call get playback position and frames on it. If you print this you can see that it shows us which frame numbers we are currently on. This matches the frames you can see in the flipbook asset and is what we can use to determine on which frame the character's foot hits the ground. As you can see with this run animation we touch the ground on frame number 1 and frame number 5. We can then check if the playback position is equal to 1 or equal to 5. Then add an OR boolean since only one or the other has to be true. Here we can then add a branch and in the true case play the sound at location. The location will just be the actor location of the character. There should be some sounds available here with Unreal Engine that we can use as placeholders for now. If there aren't any, make sure that show engine content and show plugin content is enabled and just pick a random sound for now. You should now hear the sound, but it's playing multiple times. If you again use print string on get playback position and frames, you'll see why. One frame is actually active multiple times in a row, since this is related to the frames per second setting on the flipbook. So we actually only want to play the sound the first time frame 1 or frame 5 are active. We can easily do this by using a do once node. If the branch resolves to false, we want to reset the do once to enable it again for the next footstep. You can then just add a proper sound file into the project and replace the footstep sound.
One thing to keep in mind with the do once node is that we cannot collapse this into a function, since this will reset the state of the do once. Here we better just make a custom event and call it on tick to clean things up. Now I want to show you how we can make a simple attack using the onfinish playing event from the flipbook and also how we can trigger a hitbox to activate on certain frames of the attack. First we need to go back to our input folder and create another action for attack. We then go into the input mapping context and create a binding for this. I'll use the spacebar. Back in the character blueprint, we then want to add the IA underscore attack event. Get a reference to the sprite and call set flipbook. Set this to the attack flipbook. We want to call this from the started pin on IA underscore attack. Even if we press the spacebar now though, you won't see the character attack. It just awkwardly shrugs its shoulders. This happens because on tick we're overriding the attack animation with either the idle or walk animation. I mistakenly called this function turn sprite, however it should actually be called update animation or something along those lines. We can easily fix this by creating a boolean that keeps track of our attack state. When you press the attack button we can then set this to true. In the update animation function we can then add a branch and only executes the nodes where we reset the animation if we're not attacking currently. When pressing space we'll now properly attack, however we are now stuck in the attack animation forever. We need a way for us to detect when one loop of the animation stopped playing and then set our is attacking boolean to false. Go back to the place where we trigger the attack and on the sprite call set looping and set it to false. Now the animation will play a single time and the character will freeze up. Select the sprite and scroll down to the events. Add the unfinished playing event. This will be triggered when a non-looping animation finishes playing. We can then use this to set is attacking to false and the behavior of our character will change slightly. But we still end up freezing on certain frames. We also need to set looping back to true after this. And also call play on the sprite to start it up again from the frozen state. We now have a character that can go into an attack state and come out of it once the animation finished playing thanks to the unfinished playing event. Keep in mind though that the unfinished playing event won't work with paper ZD. In that case you'll have to use the events which come with the paper ZD animation blueprint. The next step is to add a hitbox and trigger it on certain frames of our animation and this works quite similar to how we implemented the footsteps. In the character blueprint select the capsule component and add a box collision as the hitbox. Drag this forward slightly to be in front of the character. We can then create some space below the tick function. And create an event called check hitbox. This then needs to be called on each frame from the tick function. Get a reference to the sprite and call get flipbook on it. Then use the equals operator to compare and check if we're currently playing the attack flipbook. Add a branch to only continue execution if this is the case. We then want to check our flipbook to find the active frames of our attack. In this case frame 3 and frame 6 look like the ones that should be able to hit something. Again, get a reference to the sprite and call get playback position and frames.
check if this is either 3 or 6 and then add a branch to continue execution if that's the case. Get a reference to the hitbox and call get overlapping actors on it. Then call the for each loop on the overlapping actors array. This will loop over all the actors we hit and allow us to do something with them. We could specify an actor class here for when you only want to check for enemies for example, but I'll just select actor for demonstration purposes. In this case we just want to destroy them, so call destroy actor on the array element. If you start the game now and attack though, you'll see that our character disappears. This is because we overlap with ourselves. Here we can simply add a does not equal self check to prevent this. And then connect this array element to destroy actor, since we otherwise just destroy ourselves again. Let's now create a very simple actor we can try this out on. Just create a blueprint called bp underscore target. Open it up and add a cube. Drag an instance of this blueprint into the scene on the same lane where your player start is located. Then just walk up to it and attack, and you can see how it disappears. Again, if we add a print string to the current frame though, you can see that the same frame is used about 5 times. So this means we're checking for overlaps with the attack 5 times in a row. In this case it might actually make sense though, because an attack is usually active for more than a single frame. However, all of this is a bit too advanced to talk about in this video, and I just wanted to show you how we can use events and create something that acts like a notify for base paper 2D. Making a proper attack that covers all edge cases and follows best practices would take a lot more time. But you can use this pattern for a wide variety of actions that you want to trigger from your flipbooks. However, once you plan on creating a bigger game, it's probably better to move on to using Paper ZD, since that makes triggering events and actions so much easier. However, having an understanding of how base Paper 2D works will give you a strong foundation and make debugging easier. In the next episode, we'll talk about how we can use sprite sockets, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when the episode comes out. As always, thanks to my patrons for making this tutorial series possible.